This week we have platform updates, transparent solar cells, sodium ion batteries, and enough multi-core microcontrollers to make it to China and back. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Micro News. We got a lot of stuff to cover this week, so let's hop right into it. First up, we had a couple of platforms this week get updates, the first of which is Raspbian for the Raspberry Pi. Pretty cool update. We have support for Pi Zero, obviously that's, that's new and hot. Now, uh, you're also gonna get Node Red, which if you haven't heard of, I will link up down below so you can learn more about that. That is now installed by default, as well as the GPIO Zero library. Now this is a library that is for Python that allows you to have very easy and intuitive access to the GPIO pins. That's included by default now. There were also some updates to things like Scratch and Epiphany. And so, great job, Raspberry Pi Foundation, obviously continuing to iterate on Raspbian, and so you can get that. You need to do a sudo apt-get update followed by a sudo apt-get dist upgrade, and you'll be on the latest version of that. The other platform this week that got an update was Windows IoT Core. Now, you might not have even known that Windows had a version that ran on the Raspberry Pi. It is a version of Windows 10, Windows IoT Core. If you haven't seen that, check it out. I'll go ahead and link it up down below so you can see that. But anyway, they had a major update to that this week as well. And a couple of cool things that are included in that, the first of which is something that a lot of people have been waiting for, and that is serial port access. So before this update, you could not use the TX and RX pins on the Raspberry Pi, but now you can, so that's really great. The other one is uh, Wi-Fi dongle support. So uh, Microsoft has a partnership, I guess, with the Raspberry Pi Foundation, and so the original version of IoT Core only supported the official Raspberry Pi Wi-Fi dongle, which nobody had. You know, we all have these other TP-Link uh, Wi-Fi dongles, and so with this latest update, uh, IoT Core added uh, support for two Realtek chipsets. Uh, that are very popular, so those TP-Link Wi-Fi dongles that you have should now work out of the box. The last cool thing that I thought was in the update is servicing. So just like you can do sudo apt-get uh, dist upgrade on Raspbian to get a new version, you don't need to reflash your SD card. You didn't have that on IoT Core. If you wanted a new version before this, you had to reflash the SD card, which really sucks. I mean, that, that's just, that puts a damper on your project. When you need a new version, you can't just up grade it in software, you have to flash the card again. So now, just like every other version of Windows, IoT Core will update. They call that servicing. It'll get automatic updates that is turned on by default, so your Pi will update itself. So really cool stuff. So moving on, what else we have here? Out of Michigan State this week. This is really cool. We're talking transparent solar panels. And when I say transparent, not like kind of clear, like these things look like a clear pane of glass. I'll link up the video down below, you can check it out. Very cool. Now, the center of this, the, the main part of this is the TLSC, the Translucent Luminescent Solar Condenser. Now, that sounds totally made up. I mean, it sounded totally made up to me. That's because it is made up. I was tired and I got the words wrong. It's actually the Transparent Luminescent Solar Concentrator. Sorry about that. Sounds like something you'd see on Star Trek, right? Like enable the translucent luminescent solar condenser. Uh, but this is real tech coming out of Michigan State. And what it is, is there's some chemistry involved using organic salts that captures non-visible light coming into the pane of glass, directs it to the edges and where there are normal solar uh, cells attached and they absorb that uh, infrared light, it's non-visible light, but they absorb that and turn it into a voltage for electricity. Really cool, if you think about the application of this, you know, in the video they talk about putting it on skyscrapers, which, you know, would take years to re retrofit a skyscraper, but you can kind of get the idea of how this would work if panes of glass, normal panes of glass could be solar panels. I thought of like car windows, if while your car is sitting out in the sun all day, you could be harvesting energy, that would be really cool. So the best part about this tech is that it is right around the corner. This isn't a, we figured out how we could theoretically do it and it's 10 years off. They're saying that in two years, 
uh, we should be seeing these things uh, ready for mass production. So really, really cool stuff. The other really cool thing this week comes out of the French, what is it? The French National Center for Scientific Research. And they have been working on, not lithium, sodium ion batteries. So you're probably familiar with lithium ion batteries. These power everything from your iPhone to the Tesla. And uh, the problem though is that lithium is pretty rare, which makes it expensive, simple supply and demand. Sodium, on the other hand, we have an almost unlimited supply of here on planet Earth. And so uh, these guys have been working on a way to make sodium ion batteries instead of lithium ion batteries. And there's, there's a lot of challenges around that. Link up the art article if you wanna take a look at it. But basically we're at a point where the technology is getting us there. We're not at parity with lithium ion yet, but you know these things are a little bit bigger uh, than lithium ion and they're not as efficient they have some voltage drop issues but it's new tech they're iterating on it they're trying to make it better and pretty exciting uh, you know if we get rid of that dependency on lithium and get just as you know hopefully in a few years just as efficient and useful batteries using sodium ion that would be awesome for the industry so pretty exciting stuff coming out of the french i gotta read it again i can't ever remember french national center for scientific research so nice job guys Okay, that brings us to the last bit of news, and that is a survey that was conducted by ABI Research around microcontrollers. So when we think of microcontrollers, really we think of single core microcontrollers. So, you know, your PIC microcontrollers from Microchip, or what people are probably more familiar with are the Atmel AVRs. These are running, if you own an Arduino, you own a single core microcontroller uh, AVR. Now, the, the study was specifically around multi-core microcontrollers and how those are growing. Now, I've personally never used a multi-core microcontroller, but they're more popular than you would think. In 2015, the study shows we're on track to sell 150 million of them. But the more interesting part of the study was that they expect to sell 1.3 billion by 2020, that's just over four years away. And we're talking 1.3 billion. And just to give you an idea, I've got a microcontroller here. This is a PIC microcontroller. Now, not all microcontrollers are this size, I get it. Some of them are surface mount and they're much smaller. But if you took just this, this is a PIC 16F. Doesn't really matter, it's a PIC microcontroller. If you line these up end to end, 150 million, which is what we're gonna sell this year, would stretch from New York City to Denver, Colorado. Now, fast forward to 2020, we're lining these up again, 1.3 billion takes us from New York City to China. China? And then all the way back. That is incredible. So, you know, multi-core microcontrollers, the internet of things is really driving this. Manufacturers want more cores on these microcontrollers. It lowers the number of components in a device, which also lowers cost and can lower power consumption as well. So really cool stuff. Multi-core microcontrollers, they're coming, lots of them. Now, that brings us to this week's installment of Tweet of the Week. We're talking about multi-core microcontrollers. Well, Jerry Ellsworth says, back in my day, we had four bits and liked it we had to push bits uphill both ways on the bus. And really appreciate the humor there, Jerry. It's very interesting to think about what the next generation of makers will start with and how they might not even know sort of the things that we went through, just like a lot of us have no idea what it was like to program with uh, punch cards. You know, we know about them, but we don't really know what that experience was like. And so appreciate the humor, Jerry. You take home Tweet of the Week honors this week, which doesn't mean anything on a no-name YouTube newscast, but really appreciate it. And that does it for this week's news. Appreciate you guys watching. It really means a lot. I hope you're finding value. I'm trying to get some of the most interesting stories to you each week, but I would love some feedback. If you have any feedback for me, I mean, even to tell me that my setup's crappy here. I got this blank wall behind me and some cheap lights and a camera. I'm really trying. I don't have a lot of money for this, but, or if you just want to say, hey, I would love to talk to more of you in the comments on YouTube. Hit me up down there. Appreciate you watching. Hope you guys have a great week. And until next week, happy hacking.